All right, so today's big idea is that we're going to talk about Twitter. Twitter has around 320 million users or so, 325 million. Uh, it's one of the big communications mediums nowadays. Facebook is still the bigger one, and we'll get to Facebook, but I want to talk about Twitter first. Uh, on a personal level, there are some social networks that I like more than others on a personal level, and then on a business level, they're all very good. But Twitter is one of the ones, you know, after uh, MySpace, remember everyone had a MySpace page? After MySpace, then I got onto Twitter, and that's the one I, I've liked for a while. Google Plus is still my number one favorite network, but second place is, is Twitter, because it's so real-time. As we compare and contrast with, um, with other networks, especially um, Facebook, we'll see that Facebook has a lot of limitations that maybe as a user you don't notice them, but as a business you're going to definitely notice the limits of Facebook. And we'll see later the, the, the way to get past those limitations of Facebook are to pay, which is annoying. So we'll talk about that later, but we'll talk about Twitter now because it's uh, real time. It's um, updated by the second, such as Christopher Nolan is rumored to be working on the live-action Akira movie. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm sure in general about live-action. Exactly. Yeah, but it is Christopher Nolan, so it might be okay. But we'll see. Yes. I'm worried about the Attack on Titan movie. Anyway, then um, the... Um, the thing about Twitter is that we are going to create an account and then we're going to use it to connect with people, with potential customers and such. So again, we're using uh, social media in terms of uh, reaching an audience. So I like it because you can use Twitter, as we'll see, to reach totally unknown people. Whereas Facebook, it relies a lot on the connections of your friends and families. To reach people, here on Twitter, we can reach people that we totally do not know, and it is very open compared to Facebook, as we'll see later. So how many of you, just to kind of get a sense of things, how many of you currently have a Twitter account? Raise your hand. Uh, almost everyone. Okay. Uh, those of you that already have a Twitter account, though, how many of you have it for your business, something professional? Uh, just one. Okay. So. Right now, I'm, I'm going to talk about setting this up for business. If you've already got a personal one, that's good, but I'm going to set this up for business. And the thing that's different um, compared to other networks is that there's no, dif there's no difference between personal and business accounts like Instagram. Instagram, you can create um, an account, and it's either business or personal. Same thing with Twitter. Later, when we get to Google+, and Facebook, we can create, or we need to create, a personal account, and then we can create a business account. For Twitter, we can create the business account directly. So here I'm just kind of scrolling the Twitter homepage, looking at interesting things, but I want to create an account. So at the very top right corner, there is Sign Up. I'm going to click there. It'll ask you for a full name, phone number, or email. Nowadays, it, it might ask these networks might ask you for a phone number and you think well are they gonna call me and bother me and all of that and no I haven't had to deal with any of that from any of the networks that they call you this is more for verification to prevent spammers you're obviously not gonna be a spammer so it's okay to give your email or your phone but the first thing that it asks me here is full name later on you'll be able to have an address such as twitter.com slash SWC News or twitter.com slash White House or the best one of all, twitter.com slash VM Campos. But that name that is up on the address bar, you're, you're not choosing it here. This full name is basically the name behind the account but not the address. This address we choose it on a different screen. The address of your account is one unique address that only one person or one company in the whole world can have. So if someone else wanted to create VM Campos, it's already taken. 
If someone wanted to create Southwestern College, it's already taken. If someone wanted to create, you know, John's Realty, it's already taken. So we'll get to that later, claiming this unique username. This full name, this can be anything. This can be um, Victor Campos. This can be Darth Vader. This can be Christopher Nolan. You can put any name here, and it's not tied to this name here in that only one, there's only one VM Campos. Here, any name can be set. Yes? Does it require a real name? No. Twitter does not require a real name. Other networks do. Facebook, for example, Google Plus have relaxed it, but in the beginning you needed a real name. But here, they don't, you don't need a real name. So it doesn't need to be a real name. It could be a company name. Victor's Bakery. And it'll say, okay, well, what about this? I can do Darth Vader. And I'll say, okay. I can do this. Hillary Clinton. It'll say, okay. See? On the next screens is where we choose the username. And on the next screens, if I try to choose Hillary Clinton, oops, that one's taken. If I try to take Darth Vader, oops, that one's taken. So this full name here can be your full human name or your full company name. It doesn't matter. It's okay. So I'm going to go with Victor's Bakery. It asks for a phone number or email. Uh, hopefully I have an email available that I haven't used before. I'll just make it up. It asks you, tailor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Have you ever noticed you're browsing websites and then you go to um, Facebook or you go to other websites and suddenly the thing you were looking at at one website shows up on another website? Well, that's because there's tracking cookies that are paying attention to what you're doing online. And you may find it annoying or you may find it useful. Here Twitter is asking, would you like us to show stuff on Twitter about the stuff you've seen online? So if I'm really into technology or science or whatever, Twitter is going to show me more of that that it sees that I like that I've been browsing online. If I turn that off, that does not mean I'm going to not see ads or other such content. I'm always going to see ads, unfortunately. Ads are a fact of life nowadays of many of these websites. But if I turn that off, it's going to show me random things that will make me even more mad to see. So if I leave it on, it might show me a, a thing or two once in a while that I actually like to see. So it doesn't matter what you do here, really. I'll turn it off and sign up. Create a password. Make sure it's six characters or more and be tricky. Create a password, hopefully one that is uh, pretty strong. It'll ask you for a phone number. You can set the phone number, again, for more security. This helps prevent the spammers. Um, I'm going to try to skip it. There's a simple skip button at the bottom. OK, here we go. Username. Don't worry, you can always change it later. You can change anything all the time. So right here is where if I try to choose VM Campos, it'll say that's already taken. If I try to choose Hillary Clinton, that's already taken. And this is the spot also that you cannot use spaces. If you want to have spaces, you need to use underscores. And you have a limit, 15 characters. You can put capital letters, it doesn't care. Uppercase, lowercase does not matter, but if you use upper, uppercase and lowercase, that's um, to be able to read it. You can use underscores. And again, this comes back like when we were trying to create Instagram. The perfect name might have already been taken. Twitter's been around since 2006. 
So it's got, like I said, over 320 million users, so your perfect name might have already been taken. Twitter is a constantly updating stream of the coolest, most important news, media, sports, TV, conversations, and more, all tailored just for you. Tell us about all the stuff you love, and we'll help you get set up. So in the old days, you would create a Twitter account, you would log in, and it would be empty, because you didn't have any connections. Nowadays, in order to be most useful to you, it tries to connect you with interesting things. So for a regular person, that's nice, because I can find maybe interesting people to connect with, interesting news and celebrity stuff. And it's also useful for a, um, a business, because, uh, again, all of this social media is to try to find an audience. So I've got this fictional company, Victor's Bakery. I want to find people on Twitter that like baked goods, that they like cookies, that they like cakes, that they're in the area of San Diego because that's where my business is at. I want to find people, you know, like Taco Bell is really good at this. Taco Bell, um, they reach out a lot to people, especially at night and the weekends. So people are coming out of that bar and they're hungry. People, uh, Twitter starts, uh, Taco Bell on Twitter starts to chat with people. Hey, are you hungry? Don't forget we've got this taco and nacho, this and that. And it works for them. They get a lot of traffic because uh, Taco Bell is reaching the audience that would care about their food. So however you feel about Taco Bell, they are profitable and they are pretty popular on Twitter. So let's see here. For me, it says, let's go. What are you interested in? So here's some general categories. Who am I trying to connect with? I probably would not select popular accounts if this is my business because this is going to suggest to me, well, why don't you follow CNN, and why don't you follow Lady Gaga, and why don't you follow, you know, the popular accounts. For a business, that's not really going to help us, because if we tweet to them, you know, if we tweet to, the, to, to Kanye West, he's probably not going to tweet back to me. So I would skip the popular accounts, but I would maybe select some of these other ones. Business, leaders and influencers, gaming, Whatever you want here, I'm going to select business leaders and influencers. Yeah. If you already, if I already went through all that, is there a way can I go back to this section and then to see if I can make any changes? Yeah, there's. Uh, you can go back to it. I need to find it where it is once I log in, but there is a way to kind of tailor this again for you if you've already created it. Will remind me again in a little bit. Question. There's a skip button down there, I think. If you. Oh, okay. Not for you. Not for you either? It won't let you skip it. Hmm. It might be because if we're creating different, if a, if a few people are creating an account at the same time, Twitter might be confused, like, why are there so many people creating an account from the same IP, the same place? So if you can't quite skip it, uh, maybe try to refresh it. Maybe refresh your address or go to twitter.com again and see if it lets you get past. If it doesn't, well, you can do you can do it at home. So, of these suggestions, there's a bunch of accounts here. They're all turned on, and basically, if I, um, it's going to suggest here 40 accounts for me to follow. Um, I may or may not want to. You should definitely go through it and see who you don't want or what you do want. You can always uh, remove them later. We'll talk about how to follow and unfollow. Then it asks for a photo. This is your company logo. So similar to Instagram and every other network, you want to customize your profile as soon as possible. So it's not the generic icon. That way you don't look trustworthy and you don't look followable. Why would someone follow my account? The default icon on Twitter is a little egg. 
So you haven't hatched yet. Who wants to follow an egg? So you need to put your company photo as soon as possible. It'll ask you, similar to other networks, find people you know. Don't. Uh, it says find people you know, so you can see what they're sharing. Don't worry, you won't. We won't email your contacts without your permission. So if you want to connect with friends and family, you can connect your email addresses there. I don't recommend that because this always comes up about: Are you really going to base your business on the backs of your friends? How many times are you going to tweet to them again that something's for sale? How many times are you going to tweet to them again that you've updated your website? And probably, like most people, they're already on Facebook. They're not going to be dragged over to Twitter. They like Facebook, or at least use it as a necessary evil because everyone is on Facebook. So don't worry about connecting your friends and family. That will only get you so far. We're really going to talk about the techniques about finding brand new followers that will care about your product. So there is a skip button, or there should be a skip button on the bottom right. Skip this step. If that worked, then you get into the main account and it's going to then say confirm your email address for all of the features. Um, and as I said, this is live in real time. As I've been talking, there's been one new tweet right there. But part of the homework will be to fully set up your profile because you see at the moment I've, I've got an icon and a name but I've got the plain blue background and, and that sort of thing so you'll need to figure out um, how to edit that you might want to explore the top right corner that little icon on the top right there might be a way for your profile to be editable somehow What we did on Instagram was we um, we wanted to get followers, but we weren't going to entice a lot of followers um, in unless we have something to offer them. Uh, so on Twitter, it's going to be the same sort of idea about posting content, um, pictures, uh, and text and videos and that sort of thing and so you want to add you know three to five tweets about a variety of topics related to your company once you have some content once you have your profile filled out then we can start getting followers so let me talk about one of the ways that I like to get followers. Um, we have a search box at the top right. And so with search, we plug in a topic that we're interested in. So I've got Victor's Bakery. I'm going to search for cookies. As I start typing a topic, it might show me suggestions. So we've got cookies, cookies and cream, cookies LOL, and cookies outside. And it might also show me Twitter accounts with cookie somewhere in their name or biography. So think about that. If you put keywords in your biography and you tweet about uh, content and you add those keywords, you could be found from people searching. So here it pops up with cookies vision, Oreo cookie, cookie monster, cookie monster, Captain Cookie. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore all of these. I'm just gonna search for the for the word cookies. I'm gonna ignore everything here and just click on that magnifying glass. 
because there is useful stuff here, but we'll get back to that. I just want to search a, a, a keyword and then click the search button. The result is at the top, we have different things that we can view. The top results in cookies, live results, accounts that have the word cookie or related, photos, videos, and more options. So top is an interesting way to try to get followers because this is the content on Twitter that is making a big splash with that keyword. So let's say this picture of these cookies. It's in the top results, so that means it has some activity. This technique that I'm going to show here is we're searching, we're looking in the top results, that's part one. Part two is you actually find some content, and notice since I've been talking, 20 new tweets have appeared there. So you find an interesting post, a tweet, this particular one, says that it's got a bunch of activity right here. It's got favorites, which is the star, which is like likes. Question? I don't know why the, I'm trying to upload an image to Twitter, it's uh -huh. not there. There is a limit to how big it is. Is it like a three megabyte image? It might only let you like, I think, one it's, megabyte. It's no, it doesn't sound so bad. Uh, well, maybe it's too low quality. There's either, maybe it's too high quality or it's too low quality. Because so, I uploaded the same type of pictures before, but I don't know. Well, it's, I tried to select that image mm -hmm. and it's not selected. Is it a JPEG? Yeah. Mm. Well, we'll look during the lab time. Uh, it sounds like the image is the proper image, but there might be something else. So we have favorites, just like on, on, on Facebook. They call them likes. Here are their favorites, 930 favorites. Then we've got this here, which are retweets. Retweets are shares. You've got something on Facebook that you enjoy and you want your fam family to see it, so you, you share it, you pass it along. So here, 224 retweets. So if, if this photo, if this tweet originally reached, if it originally reached 300 people and then 224 of them retweeted it, now it reached even more people, like 10,000 people, let's say. And I don't know why they don't have this, and I hope they add it at some point. There's no number next to the reply. The reply is a comment, so I, I wish they would add a comment, a, a, a number there to tell you how many comments. I'm sure they can program it, of course. I don't know why there's no number there. The point is, I'm going to find a, some content, I'm going to search for it in the search box, and I'm going to see, okay, people seem to be interacting with this. So you'll be able to see who these people are. If you uh, if you click on the tweet itself, usually the time, this was posted five hours ago. If you click on the time, it'll show you the picture in total, and here it is. So there's a bunch of replies here, retweets and favorites, and if you click on, for example, favorites, here's a list of all of these people that favorited that tweet. If you click on the retweets, here's the people that the retweet. Very similar to Instagram. You get, you get what you give. So here, if these people took the time to reply, to retweet, and so forth, you could go in, hopefully read their, their bio, and then click follow. I wouldn't recommend simply what I'm doing, which is just follow everyone because probably you're going to follow accounts that you don't really want to follow. Uh, but that's part of the technique. You're, you're following accounts. These have been active. These accounts have actually replied or retweet, and you might get a better result by following those that have actually written something, because a simple favorite, um, you know, the little star, is, is so temporary, just like Instagram. You give a heart, you give a favorite, you move on. What else is there? 
you can do a retweet, which is a little bit more effort, and then the reply is the most effort because you know people here actually seem to be really, really interested in that cookie. So, for example, Ella right here. Still so sad about Friday though. You don't even know. Okay, well, I can um, tweet. I can follow her. And let's see, Anna. So you can hover over an account and click the follow. Um, So all of these accounts that I am following, they get a re they get a notification, like Instagram. At the top here, there's going to be a bell that'll tell you your notification. So I have one so far. Something happened so far since I've since I've logged in. And so the point is, again, these are, you've just created an account and you're going to post amazing things, but no one knows you exist. One of the ways to make them know you exist is to start interacting with people that are interacting with things that you care about or that your business is about. I can do a follow. I can do a favorite to their comment. I can do a retweet or reply. And yes, some people will say, who are you? Leave me alone. It happens very rarely. Really, I've done this for several years and it hasn't happened that much. When it happens, it does hurt, but then you move on. Um, and so uh, you, you're going to talk to total strangers, you're going to reply to their comments. I would not reply, retweet, and favorite. That's way too much. So I would not do all those four things. Follow, reply, retweet, and, and favorite. I wouldn't do all of those. That's, I don't know, that's weird. That's creepy. It's too much. I would do maybe a favorite, and then who else? Okay, maybe that retweet, and someone else. Reply. I wouldn't do all of the four interactions with one person. That's kind of needy. Let's see, I'm going to go back to search. I can go over to photos. Oh, some amazing cookies. Clicking on the time. Let's see. So. So let's see, in this case, I'm going to reply to someone. So Michael Oxley. You can reply, and depending on the person, because some of these, for example, they are mentioning other accounts on their reply. So if you click reply, it's going to mention all of them. You can tailor the tweet just down to the original person. The original person that wrote is the first name there. Everything after that are the names of other accounts that that person was referring to on Twitter. So you can pair the tweet down to this. So he's asking, what is life? I'll say something like, uh, yes, you're going to interact with, with random people, but hopefully sharing a common topic. I'm a bakery. I'm trying to get people to visit my bakery. I don't know if this person at the moment at all lives in San Diego. I can do more research by clicking on their profile to see their location and all of that. But there's still some importance to just building a fan base because, again, popularity breeds popularity. So even though Michael may be in New York, and my store is here in San Diego, I would still try to get him as a follower because he might have a hundred a hundred followers and maybe two or three of them are in San Diego. Maybe I tweet an amazing photo of a cake and he retweets it and it reaches some of his followers in San Diego and I say, hey wait, that store is here in San Diego and they come to my store. So there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. So here I'm gonna try to reply and I'm gonna say cookies are life. Always. And this is going to depend what you write, how you behave, and all of that. It's going to depend on the previous assignments, one and two. Remember, company profile and marketing strategy. If your company is a serious kind of company, you know, financial company, uh, legal company, realty company, you might not be using slang, you might not be using the latest memes and emoji and all of that. It really depends on the character of your company. That's why it was one of the questions on the assignments. So see, my Victor's Bakery is going to be kind of funny and silly and friendly and all of that. So here I'm writing a fun, funny, friendly, silly reply.
Now, one of the cool things about using uh, Twitter on the mobile device is that you've got this hot new uh, universal language of emoji, right? You see all these little icons all over the place now. Uh, so you can do emoji on your mobile device. But uh, depending on your computer, you may or may not be able to. So there is a website, getemoji.com. Getemoji.com will let you go to um, this website. You can copy the emoji and then paste it into Twitter or other places. So um, it says select, copy, and paste. Getemoji.com. So what's a good picture here? There it is. I did a reply, got an emoji, and nowadays uh, that's very popular using emoji icons. You can get them pretty easily on your mobile device, but on, a, on your desktop you have to get them from other sources. And the one that I like is this one, getemoji.com. So usually when you're doing this search, I wouldn't really be replying or interacting with the original poster, especially if they are big and famous and powerful, because sometimes people that are on the level of 1.89 million followers are not going to see us, the little people, to, to reply. So it's the people that are replying to the famous people that I would be replying to. So not only can you have text, you can have pictures. So I've got add photos. And if you've got a photo, you can upload it. On the mobile device, it also lets you add video. You can record video, I think, up to 30 seconds. So if you've got the app on your device, you can add video. You can add video on a, on a tweet on the desktop, but you have to copy the link of the video. Like you find a YouTube video or a video from other sites like Vimeo or whatever, you have to get the link from that video from that other site, copy it, and paste it here. It's a little more direct on the mobile device.
So one other way on top of this method of searching that is effective, so the main idea is you're going, you're going to be searching and you're going to be interacting with people, giving favorites, giving retweets, giving replies, giving follows. How much you do that uh, depends on the particular profile itself and such. Question? Uh, when you retweet someone, it will give him a notification to them? Yeah, everything that you do will give him a notification. Oh, okay. That's how you can get people's attention. Part of that, what I would also say is, well, you can do a reply um, and then add a question. People often like to answer questions something related to what the topic was, of course. If you are a realtor and here someone's talking about cookies and I say, well, what do you think about your dream vacation, your dream home? They're going to say, who are you? Leave me alone. Block. So if you are replying and being on the topic of the original topic, and hopefully you're searching for a topic that your business is about, so I would say something here She's saying, these are so cute, I'm going to say, yes. So first being, first agreeing to get on their good side, and then say, what do you think of these? And I'll say, uh, which of these is your fave? And then add a photo. If there's a way when you go to, let's say I go to my profile page, because when I retweet someone, it starts being in my, my profile page. That's the downside of the retweet, that basically someone else's tweet then shows up on your timeline. Yeah. So if you retweet them, that's what you're doing. You're showing their stuff on your timeline. So either don't do the retweet. So all or, you do is star is better? It, a star could be a little better because then it doesn't show up on your timeline oh, like that. Okay. So can I undo the retweets? Yeah, just just click on the icon again, the re, the tweet the retweet icon. Oh, okay. That's one technique. I don't recommend that. This is one of these underhanded techniques. You can retweet a bunch of people, and then unretweet them later. So let's see which of these is your fave. Tweet that. So Russet, what's her name again? Russet Stob got a uh, notification. So someone said, I have the artistic ability of a rock. Well, right here, I'll say rocks can be very artistic. So right now I'm just showing examples, I'm replying silly things and all of that, but your company may not have that voice. So uh, that's why you need to know how you're going to uh, have your company online and who you're going to connect with. Like right now, if I, was, if I was a realty business, these would not be very good people to connect to. They all seem very young, they don't seem like they're really looking you know, for their own property and such. So here I'm just choosing any example and going for it. But if your particular company is a little more special, specialized, you are going to maybe spend a little bit more time searching what's the right keyword, what are the popular accounts, but the main idea is that you're going to search. Um, and so... It takes time. If you... If you... Um, you know, if you set aside a time, 10 minutes, once a day or so, to go in and just start replying to people on topic, favoriting their stuff, you're going to see that you're going to start to get followers. I can't guarantee how fast, but check it out. I've got two followers so far. 
in the little bit of time here, they may not be quality followers. They might not be those that are going to buy my product yet, but popularity breeds popularity. These followers that I have um, could spread my message. When people visit my account and see what I've been tweeting and see that I've got followers, if I've got 20 followers, that might entice people to be my 21st follower. If I've got one follower, I might not get I, I might not be very enticing for someone to become my second follower if I don't have a lot of good, very good content. So it is the effort of trying to reach people. Searching here could also give me the idea of um, for myself to post something. Um, the the pictures um, I could get an idea for what kind of pictures to post based on popularity. What's that? Sorry, I'm just looking at the first one. It's like an arcade. Yeah, arcade or something. Where at? Higher? The green, lime green, black. This one? Yeah. No? no? Never mind, it's just a stand. Yeah, it's a stand with someone. What is this? Until 2 p.m. for chocolate chip cookies and granola. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't doubt that people have made arcade cabinet cakes. Oh no, One Direction. Or Zane. Anyway, um, so um, we're going to end very soon, but we'll have a little lap time. Again, hands-on. All of this stuff is about hands-on, about, about being active and, and social. And so, uh, especially for a company, you're, you're going to need to break this. And obviously in real life, it's much more difficult, this shyness of meeting new people. But this is online. This is for your business to reach a new audience. So it's okay to start tweeting to brand new people, people that you've never met, and all of that. And uh, the the negative people, um, you probably will not run into them if you yourself are being positive. If you yourself are sharing nice or cool or interesting or funny things, you should hopefully attract the same kind of crowd. So like this up here, I went to the notifications. There's the listing of the two followers. I could further interact with them, follow them back. You're not required to follow any accounts that follow you. Um, and really, when you follow accounts, you should follow those that relate to your business as best as possible. So we'll talk more about this on Twitter, using it effectively on um, Wednesday. You can start looking at the assignment, and um, it'll be given officially on on Wednesday. Because on Wednesday, I want to talk about another way that I like to use Twitter, not just search, but you've probably heard of hashtags. So we'll talk in detail about hashtags, and also event-driven event driven tweeting. So based on a particular event, tapping into that live moment to tweet with a variety of people related to that moment. Again, I'll explain that on, on Wednesday and then give the assignment, and it'll be due a week from Wednesday. So any general questions at this point? Okay, so we'll have a little lab time, and um, if you need any help with Twitter so far, call me over. What you want to do is explore view profile and settings. Um, and then use it, of course. Maybe get the app. It's uh, got a pretty useful app as well. Although, personally, I like to use the desktop version on my laptop because I can open several windows at once and quickly put together these ideas of social media. Whereas on a mobile device, it's a bit more limiting unless you have your resources handy on your device. And then next time I'll also talk about... Well, I'll mention it now and then we'll talk about it next time. Uh, if you want multiple people 
to manage your account. Um, we'll look at it in detail, but you want to look at something called TweetDeck. TweetDeck.com. TweetDeck will allow multiple people to connect to the same account, and then multiple people can manage the same account with their own passwords. And it's also a very cool search system. You can look at that on your own, read the help, but then we will look at it together next time. So we'll, we'll end the main lecture. I'll put the notes on, on um, I mean, I'll put the videos online, and you can replay back any of what we looked at today.